What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today with more Railroads Online joined on Heist's server actually. I'm, um, oh here comes, here comes Heist, that's great. What's up Heist, nice, nice, that's a class 70 tender. Yeah, that's, that's a, that's a wrath, wrath of, that's amazing. Nice engine. Well, you named one for me on your railroad, so I figured that uh, the good old ES and D could have one for you. Yeah. So meet the. the you know, you could you gun. could actually write ES and D. I'm just saying you don't have to write out the full name every time, but you know. Well, you know, all the cars get lettered with the ES and D, oh, yeah, and then the perfect. rest of it. I mean, the the font work and the scroll work, it's so pretty. Yeah. That Armagon spent so much time making these beautiful drop shadows, and why not just uh, have a little fun with them? Yeah, no, that's, that's, one that's of the great. Best I'm just going right? to focus on this text right here. This is this is nice. <laughs> this is good text. This is great text. Is anyway, text. one one of the things I get mentioned a lot, uh, it's happened to a lot of videos, I've spent a lot of time working on my Iron Mine route, um, and a lot of people have been complaining that, like, you know, it's 3%, it's 4%. I should have made the whole thing, like, 1% or 2%, you know? And yeah, apparently you've actually done that. <laughs> yeah, so um, I think your viewers are wrong, and you're right, and you should have done it three or to four percent because uh, yeah, I did mine at two percent. Um, I think there's a brief section of two and a half that just came about because I was fixing bad track, but it's two to two and a half, um, almost all two percent overall, and uh, you'll see it is extremely long. I mean, it's quite the run oh, don't don't mind i that. love the don't care you that. put into storing your cars it's, it's so nice don't, that car es and deed okay yeah it's, and, good. And <laughs> it's just it's just like it's, it's like it wants to be part of the trade you could tell it gets hooked up on both sides it just you know it just somehow got off of the that's amazing yeah so i put these little uh, earth bump stops at the back and we came in a little too hot and uh, that that's what happens so Fantastic. Yeah. Um, in case people are wondering, uh, you uh, you kind of went a little robot-y there. That's because there's currently a freaking blizzard outside my house. So uh, if I randomly get disconnected, that's that's what the deal is. I just figured I'd mention it now in case you have more robot moments. It's definitely not your fault. Um, the weather here just currently sucks. Domo arigato. Yeah. No, you're you're All actually right. you're actually the kind of part robot there. That's fantastic. <laughs> It's so Beautiful. so appropriate. So this is a loaded train. Um, what you got this specs is, um, spec sheet for this? Yeah. So this is uh, five empty hoppers, two loaded lumber cars, uh, one loaded beam car, and then a caboose. And I want to say uh, when I did the math on it, this gives you like something like four percent clearance. Right. So we're at the smelter, and we we've started the climb, and it it'll just climb the whole way to the iron mine from here. Is what you're saying? Yeah, so smelt the floor to the iron mine, and the, the reason I did it this way is um, in my previous series and my previous runs, I made a really short but steep, like, 4 to 5% run, and right. I wanted to show, uh, you know, everyone as a developer how I would attack the other problem of doing, okay, I want to run longer trains with lower power, which is why we're running the Eureka. Right. Uh, good old gutless um, here. Okay. Oh. Uh, oh. It's fine. It's my internet, fine. my internet was like you were like a robot, and then my internet just like the Eureka just did like a triple backflip and landed back on the track. It made me uh, okay. Yeah, we're good. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that was crazy. That was that was intense. You're gonna you're gonna get the entertaining run through, I think. Uh, well, uh, I'll get the one that actually works. <laughs> it's super smooth until it wasn't, and then it's back to being super smooth. That was insane. That made me. I honestly That's freaked funny. out. Oh, sorry. You were saying. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I wanted to solve the, the age-old railroad question of you want to keep the ruling grade as low as you can so you can run the longest trains with the lightest power. Obviously, that's why we've got the Eureka, and uh, we're going up the two and a quarter percent, and we're slowly slowing down, so uh, we're almost to the top of that, so we should make it, but... You're at 100% uh, running... reg right now? I'm, I'm 100, 100. We're right on the margin, man. I mean, this thing is oh, uh, boy. not a lot of attractive effort. So, but this uh, this train set curve we're about to turn back on, uh, this is kind of where it levels off for a brief bit, and we'll pick up some speed before you get back on the 2%. Since I'm uh, this... an ignoramus when it comes to train, what's a train set curve? You mean like a model uh, railroad? Yeah, so this is, that's my joke for, uh, for really bad sharp curves. I mean, this is a very very sharp curve yeah um, and typically like every like kids train set you get the the curves that they come with are so ridiculous like right you know, I yeah mean, and, they also have trains I mean, that usually only have like four it, so. wheels though without bogies or anything i'm just you know 
I had one of those like the wooden train sets, you know, where it's like the little the, the train is like really just like a car and you just fling it down right. around the wooden tracks. But like whenever it came time to play with the toys, everyone was always fighting over playing with the wooden train set, you know? That was that was the like the best toy to have. Right. Exactly. At least in my my generation. I just probably dated myself. Now I'm just really old. <laughs> hey, I had the I had the wooden train sets too. But I'm also really old compared to a lot of people anyway. So <laughs> yeah, we had a we had a train room growing up. My dad had taken a room in the basement and he had made a model HO train set for us. And it had like two tracks that you could run with two different like electrical hookups because I had a brother and so you know he gave us this. It was basically just two loops that went around like this one table. But that's that was still super fun though yeah oh yeah when you're a kid man model trains are like the best you know but Indeed. it wasn't really our project because we didn't you know we were too too young to really contribute anything to the model railroad you know well of course yeah that, uh, if you're like really getting after it there's a lot of skills that go into that yeah uh, so yeah <laughs> all right now we're at we're across my my dev bridge that hopefully Peyton approves of. I'm yet to have him come take a look at it, but it was the one bridge I've actually really tried hard to make look nice. Because uh, uh, if if you haven't noticed on my right ways, um, I don't spend a lot of time making things look nice. I try to make them function more or less. Um, yeah, which also is I I, not a I given, definitely so. didn't notice with the giant dam of foundation that blocks this valley off coming up. I really. Well, so, you know, I said it was the one bridge previous that I went to look nice, and uh, in my last episode I put on my own playthrough, uh, I said I'd come back and fix that bridge, and you can see that I have not done that. Yeah. No, it's, it's good. <laughs> if you made it any lower, you could actually block the river and then put an actual, like, hydro dam in here, generate some electricity, start running some electric trains, you know? Like... You know, you've got a lucrative business model. Yeah, uh, these are these are game features that you guys are just missing out on. Why can't I dam the river? You know, and, and start yeah, and make man-made lakes, man. You yeah, exactly. To float this stuff. So I've got the math pulled up. So we have 149,538 pounds behind us. Right. And we have 11% clearance. So. Uh, the maximum estimated grade was 2.21%, and we almost didn't make it up to two and a quarter. So that's how uh, razor thin we were earlier. And we do have a stretch of 2.5% uh, on that right side across the canyon from us that we'll have to get to. So, so we still have to go all the way around the canyon and then go back up and then loop around and then come back again. Yeah, you can see the other reverse loop is up on our left. That's almost at the peak. So we're, we're literally going to go across the canyon walls twice because... This is to make this large of an elevation change. That's what you have to do. And so I understand a lot of folks um, do a 2% line from the sawmill or the freight depot to the iron mine, and that works. But I was trying to do the commodity flow as it makes sense. I want to bring the iron direct to the smelter and not have to yeah, worry about Yeah, if you go from, like, you still have to get from the smelter to the sawmill then, and then you have to go from the sawmill to the iron mine. Like, you're still doing a huge. You, the elevation yeah. change is still the same. It's just a. I like I'm this. I'm just trying um, to do it in uh, the flow of. Uh, don't, don't pay attention to that. This abstract art thing. piece over here. That the, is an art piece. It's, yeah. It's wonderful. So, that is one of my patented um, <laughs> surveying trestle helixes. Oh, okay. Um, I got to this height and I thought I was right at the iron mine, but I couldn't see it. So, I built a, a trestle out into the trees and then I spun it around to see where I was going um and then realized that the iron mine's still like another 100 feet higher or whatever nice so uh yeah but uh i went to try and delete it and for whatever reason i can't get those last two pieces to delete so it's just a bit of modern art see so. I, I find this this is such an interesting thing you've made this huge long two percent run right yeah so if we had like a cook mogul we could do this same load with like three or four percent probably right yeah probably yeah and Let's do the math on how much time it takes for you to make the cook mogul in the number of extra runs you could do with the cook mogul versus the Eureka. You know what I mean? Like, like you're taking yeah. five times as long to do a run when really you could just use a slightly bigger, more expensive engine and get the same result. I, I It's not as fun. Yeah. I understand that. There's, there is a reason that the railroads and the narrow gauge railroads actually had like four or five percent grades i mean right yet one of the existing sections of the denver and rio grande western which was like the big narrow gauge railroad that we talk about 
um, most of their engines on the tech tree and whatever. One of the existing sections that's still around that is a tourist railroad you can ride, uh, the Coombrace and Toltec, up Coombrace Pass, which is the a tallest railroad pass in the United States at 10,020 feet. Uh, the grade out of Chama to get to Coombrace Pass is four to five percent for 15 solid miles. And that's what they had to do. That was what the railroad needed to be. And guess what? They ran two, three, whatever engine trains up, up and over that. And they built that in 1880. So class 70s were running on that. I mean, uh, the, the class 70 that I've operated or the modern one, C19, number 346, it was originally the 406 named Coombrace for that mountain. And there's pictures of it when it got delivered and it ran over that pass for the first time. So 4% grade was not a big deal, even in 1880. You know, so, so. I, I was looking up some mountain trains the other day just for, for curiosity's sake, right? And I saw some that like, oh my, did we? Okay, we're yeah, on, right? Yeah. No, oh. I know that spot's a bad spot, so it I, looks I like backed it, off. It looks like we <laughs> derailed there for a second, okay. The, the, the tender did d try to do a couple skateboard tricks, yeah. even on my end, okay. so. <laughs> I wasn't sure. Whew. Man, my internet being uh, being sketchy just makes this such a more rewarding experience. Just you can't you don't tell. Know what's bad yeah, track what's what's that happening? internet? It's crazy that we were way down there though before. Like we're way up here now. This is nuts. Right. What a view. Yeah, I definitely want to do a bypass at some point. It's four percent when I get a little bit more motive power. Obviously, I have the Wrath of Khan now. Yeah. So I, I do have a fair bit more power, but I want to get a second engine, and then I think I'll feel better about doing lots of four percent runs the world's second sharpest corner right now which is probably that's, not that's yeah it's a little it's a little sketchy through there but i had to turn the, the whole thing around and dog bone and i didn't want to have a massive trestle doing it it so. looked like it looked like you started building the trestle radius and you're like this is fine this is fine this is fine oh my god there's a mountain we have to turn now and then <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's actually my thought process that's yeah. actually what happened yeah, yeah it looked it looked very much like that no, anyway, I was I was saying I was looking up some mountain trains like just for curiosity's sake, and I saw some like 10-15% looking lines, but they had like gear teeth on the train wheels, and then like there was gear teeth along the side of the track. You know what I mean? Like a linear gear. Yeah, yeah, that's called a rack railroad, and they they weren't super super common, but yeah, they they do exist. Uh, there's one in Pikes Peak in Colorado. There's the Mount Washington uh, up towards Vermont somewhere, I think. But um, yeah, they have grades up to like 35% because they literally, they don't drive the wheels. The wheels are unpowered. They are just pulled up by the cog. And uh, then the wheels um, So the those wheels are special just locomotives then for that? It's not like a standard, yes. it's all- No, they're not standard at all. I mean, even the steam engines that they have at Mount Washington um, and the old ones for the cog in, uh, at Pikes Peak, they're built with the boiler slanted. So when they're on flat track, the boiler's aimed down so that when they're going up the 15, 20, 30% grade, the boiler is relatively flat so that you don't have to carry the water ridiculously high to make sure you don't explode. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, they're a neat piece of engineering. There's even um, really crazy ones um, over in Switzerland where they had multiple engine sets on steam engines that they could engage or disengage for rack, railroad, or for standard railroad. So they had two engine sets, two sets of cylinders and rods built in the same engine uh, so that, you know, when they got to the steep bit of the railway, they could plunk it down and, and run with the gear teeth instead of the wheels. Right. I thought we were almost there, and then I realized we have to double back again. Yep. Yeah, so I was so crushed. I got to, like, right here, and I was like, dude, I'm almost there. I'm going to be able to, like, do maybe a short section, a two and a half, and we'll have it. And I started trying to lay down from that upper ridge just barely above us. Yeah. And even to get back to the rest of the two and a half percent where we were coming around earlier, it was like five percent. I mean, and it's, it, like, it's really it's it makes a lot of sense if you think about it. Like, if, you know, two percent means if you want to go up two feet, you need to go out a hundred feet. Whenever I'm laying rail in this game, I always find it so depressing when you're like, oh, I'm so close. Look at how close it is. And then you start building down. You're like, what? This is five percent. And it's still like miles above the point you need to get to. Right. And you're just like, yeah, oh, well, uh, guess we're looping more. Look at so this. this. I can uh, just I can just jump over here. Oh, no, I can't even. You, I was well, gonna, I mean, if you if you can get up there, yeah. So, oh, uh, but, oh, God, I made a mistake. I made a, icon, it's, I'm icon. coming back. I'm going to I'll be you, OK. You'll you'll be able to pick us up when we go on the ground right here. Uh, I've got some weird issue right at this curve that likes to send Eureka's tender flying. So I'm just going to we're going to go walking speed through this. Interesting. OK. 
uh, a knock on wood. All okay. All right. Happy. Happy. Okay. All right. We made it. That's. I had that the other day first. with 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 Dapper when we were driving on uh, the server he plays on, and we were going, and it, it seemed like a really shallow curve, and it just yeeted all like a couple rail cars off for no reason. I mean, we're going quick, but it was it was very weird. Yeah, so I think um, part of that is related to the way the physics is done and the faster you go and particularly depending on your connection, um, the more likely you are to have a weird calculation happen when you're particularly when you're going through like an S curve or right. a sudden change in curvature. So yeah, the rail um, could go like through the like the wheel could go through the rail or something before it has time to calculate the the physics collision yeah. or whatever. Yeah, and, and that's that's also why our top speed is capped right now at about you know whatever it is like 17 miles an hour. But um, those are the kinds of fixes we're working on right now. Oh, so, so that is a hard cap on top speed. Like there is a the engine yes, should be able to there go faster. Is a hard the locomotives cannot accelerate faster than 17 except climax, which is like 14 or something like that right. miles an hour. Um, unless you go downhill. You can get going faster if you have, um, you know, gravity assist, but just innately by the locomotives themselves, you won't, so. I love and how this, this entire here. trip for me has been, how much robot does heist sound like? I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna say it again. There's a blizzard outside my house, which affects my internet quality for some reason, but... <laughs> I know that it's been like, there'd be like 30 seconds where it's like, oh, it's so crystal clear. I could hear everything now. And then all of a sudden it was like, bleh, 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 bleh. but you can kind of like hear what's going on. It's just, it's a very interesting experience. And so you can see that um, even uh, on my own level, I didn't follow the ratio either. It wasn't just a mess up that I did on your save. Uh, You're at six. Yeah, so. You didn't even bring the right ratio to fix this though. Yeah. So, you, you know, I didn't remember what I had up here. So. <laughs> <laughs> you bought you brought 12 12 lumber which is like you know perfect and then you only brought three beams which is like nine and 12 it's gonna it's still not gonna fix it well that was uh that was actually pretty quick so uh i think there's only one thing left to do and that's just just send it at full speed down the railway i'm saving let's do it yeah well, I, I feel like we're gonna time. make it this is only two percent i mean you have some you have some gnarly quarters though. oh there's there's train set curves it's yeah. it's gonna happen we'll probably go off at the the first turn back if i'm gonna be a guessing man be a deer and grab the switch and uh, i'll chase yeah. you well i really hope people aren't upset about my terrible internet. Well, they'll just have to come over and watch my POV on my channel and it, uh, yeah, yeah. and they'll be able to hear me uh, all in my blurred. Shameless you plug! You Shame the switch. I threw the switch. <laughs> Either what? your internet or the, or the, or the switch. I, I swear to God, I saw the animation <laughs> of the switch like it moved on my screen. Alright, reload! Alright, round two. Take two, let's do it. We're gonna make it further this time, I promise. Listen, I took the Betsy at full speed down like my route from the iron mine and it made it no problem. Like the porter is is unbelievable. It tracks quite well. Eureka, yeah, I don't know. I bet the porter would do it on this railroad even, but yeah, uh, my money is that we're gonna bid it at uh, turn one basically at the top of the hill here. But so. the cars will survive. Oh, no. <laughs> did you already did you already lose it? <laughs> I can't it's string even. Lined. Oh it's string my! Lined back over here. Oh my god! I didn't even. Uh, I didn't even like you. I couldn't even see it. Oh my god, bro! That's yeah, so the, much damage. The, the, the whole thing string. It wasn't even just here. one. It was all of them. Oh my god. Well, I mean, we still have one and a half vaguely on the track. So I all right, know, take three. Take three. Reload. It's quick. Oh, reload. Reload. We, reload. We you point. have to do it. Okay, we need the whole train. We That's gotta at fine. least make it out of the station. I mean, come on, let's be real. If, <laughs> if we don't clear the switch, what are we even doing? Okay, I'm going to ever so gingerly crawl through this turn. Oh, you didn't do the, the thingy, the thingy where you gotta go like, take three, you know, with the clapper, the clapper thingy, oh, the scene right. three, episode Take four. three! Yeah. I flipped take the, three. Oh, I flipped the switch. Okay. All right, we flipped the switch. I've not, yeah, oh my God. No, 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 stop it! Cars, uh, this this curve. 
Did you just do right, it again? Have, oh my god, look at this I, guy. I lost look half at, the train. We have four we have four we have four hoppers. Alright, you know, we're just gonna we're just gonna I do think, it. We can't do it more times than three. That's just embarrassing. We, well, that's know. just just the rule. Yeah. It, well those cars have E S and D'd, as it were, so we're just gonna go with it. I feel like E S and D though, like you know, the designers of this railroad they seem to blame everything on everyone else, but yet make these, uh, as you said, train set curves. So I'm very con confused about, you know, the naming of this railroad. It seems like a self-fulfilling prophecy, you know what I mean? Well, you know, that's the, that, that may be part of the joke, perhaps, mm, I think. I see, yes. <laughs> All right, so uh, my money is on, if not this curve, the, the curve right before the bridge. I think the cars will make so. it, though. The cars might make it. They they really might. The Eureka is gonna throw itself off. Yeah. And we'll have to see if the uh, the links the links do it. I don't know. Oh, you know what? Oh, oh my oh, god. the tender one. I would to. be I would be pooping myself. <laughs> the the if, cars. If every car. Oh, it's the the third one was like up on two there. Oh man. How did we not go off right there? Oh, oh, oh the, the, the tender's tender still is bouncing. Pissed. Look at them all bounce. It's so crazy. They're, they're bouncing on my end too. That is not just the connection. That's like, so I'm almost good. Losing them. They're still alive though. This, this is nuts. All right, I'm not gonna make this contra. I'm gonna get out and uh, we yeah. can just uh, watch this together from the back. Make sure that there, there's no con uh, controversy here. We are uh, genuinely sending this railroad or this train down the railroad uh, driverless. I, I can't believe it survived those curves. Look at this. Oh, okay. That one was nearly as sketchy. Though. That last one, every car up on like two, four trucks, whatever. <laughs> the sides, you know, like. A little, a little spicy. Yeah. yeah. So it'll probably make it through here. It'll probably get back by the two and a half percent, the last turn back bridge. Okay, right so hear that, me out. What if noise. you made a foundation, like concrete wall foundation that hugged the rail? Would it keep the train upright with the physics, or would it just, like, still dive through it? Oh, um, I mean, if we updated the train hitboxes a little bit better, you, you, you possibly could do that. And just have um, your train go way too fast down this, like, super narrow passageway that forces that it to great. stay upright? That's this the is, way to do it. Yeah, that's, that's the steepest grade. The hitboxes are not 100% accurate, particularly on the locomotives, because with all the moving different pieces and trying to fit the player model through and everything, um, we had so many problems, like so many random crashes, issues, weird things, that it was just easier to really simplify the hitboxes. So I know a lot of folks are like clamoring for like, we want better hitboxes to put sand in, but you really don't even need sand right now, so yeah. we'll, get, I had, we'll get I, there. Bear like, I us. get it. A lot of people, I've, I've had some comments where people are like, oh, I don't like the fact that you can just jump through the boiler into the cab or whatever, but from playing the game, like, it's it's kind of, oh, oh. Oh, it's Wow, we're still, we're still alive. That's insane. I can't believe this. Oh, oh this, my god, we're actually this, still if we, <laughs> if we make it down to the bottom of this railroad, I I'm mean, going to post this video all oh, over the. No, oh, there, there, there. Never that's mind. the spicy quarter. That's okay. That's, hold on. The, yep. Hold on. Let's just get rid of this stuff. Oh, I guess we can delete it. That's right, can't we? <laughs> we can delete it. I, I've already saved, and we're not going to save over it. So we can we can delete poor Pudas. It won't bye let bye me Pudis. demolish poor Pudas. Oh well, it's it can just go down that okay, way. Okay, it'll we'll just go in it. reverse. We're good. Yeah. Now, bye, how bye, do bye, we? Bye bye Pudas. Uh. <laughs> Uh, we got a we got a situation here. <laughs> you gonna you gonna roll? Is this too tight oh, of a corner? Oh, I just for, I oh, just broke the link and re reattached the link and it like updated uh, ooh, the physics. Sometimes, sometimes that'll do that. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. There's a couple weird nuances with the way that the cars go to sleep and wake up, quote unquote, so that the performance isn't ridiculously bad. Yeah, when, that makes uh, sense. When you have a bunch of cars, you don't want parked that, cars yeah, calculating no, physics if you're not touching them. Like it's what what's the yeah. point? Yeah. Yeah, so sometimes it can be weird to get physics initiated there, but they should roll on their own, but sometimes they don't. It looks like Pudis is still on the rails, which is, is it? I can't see it at hilarious. all. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, you can't see it, so I've got the, the sniper look. It's still on the rails for now, and it might make it. Well, it has no tender know. now, so it's kind of... I see it, the doors. Yeah, not... Here's the doors of Pudis. Uh, we're passing well, you know. the doors. <laughs> That's one of my favorite <laughs> dumb glitches. Like, what random bit of animated locomotive will we Yeah, random, next? like, the whistle, uh, or not the whistle, the bell. The, the bell. bell is very commonly found. Or the, or the headlight side yeah. inspection doors and, or, yeah, all that fun stuff. Yeah, so I don't know. The uh, It might make it all the way because it's kind of a free bird with no constraints other than its own two points anymore. 
Because a lot of the derailments actually on curves come from the fact that uh, you end up hitting hitboxes, you right. know, car to car with the, the couplers, so. It's kind of actually amazing. Your line, like, I did a gravity run from the iron mine down to the smelter on my world, but um, my line has, like, yeah, flat sections, right? and it has some uphill sections, so you have to really manage your brakes. Like, if you overbrake, you'll get stuck in a little valley. But yours is like, you could literally just let these go on their own forever and you'd be perfect. Apparently, yeah, just the rolling resistance of a couple of cars. I mean, obviously they're empty, which I, loads might be a quite a different story, but empty cars seem to roll down this just like nice and easy. Hey, Pudis is still on the on the track. It's on that bridge up ahead of us. That's amazing. <laughs> Such a wonderful experience. We didn't even bring it. We could have brought iron back. You realize we could have filled up and brought. We, we could have. We, we could have. We could have. But we were planning to wreck it, and I have since deleted Pudis's tender. Oh, that's um, true. So you know, we're no no saves. But that's here, a, like that's only like your first Eureka, bro. Like I've been through. Three. Well, it's come true. On. Come on, no. no it's it's my my first in this playthrough. This is my fourth playthrough of the game. So it's probably <laughs> everyone's like, my... "Cod, why haven't you bought the climax?" Yeah. It's like because I bought three freaking Eurekas. I haven't gotten there yet, okay? I've had to buy three Eurekas, okay? No wonder I can't afford the Climax. <laughs> yet, yet three Eurekas is still, like, less attractive effort than one Climax. Yeah, than one Climax, that, that, yeah. It's before you even take into account the weight and everything for the grades, so. So I feel like, uh, I feel like I gotta do a roller coaster track at some point where, you know, you just ride in a single, a single hopper car and, you know, buckle up, make it some 10% sections. That'll be glorious. Rolling resistance of plane bearings is pretty significant. Yeah. Um, and and all sorts of stuff affects it. It's kind of hilarious. Like, the, the old railroads had tonnage calculators for, like, if it was cold out. Like, you had a... Your, your bearing resistance and rolling resistance was different if it was, like, sub-30 degrees uh, right. Fahrenheit or if it was, you know, greater than, you know, 60 or something. You had three different ratings for them. Right, on, on so. one end you'd have metal swelling, which would increase your friction, because well, it's too hot, I would think. Mm -hmm. And then on the cold end you'd have, like, the lubricant being too viscous? Is that, that what yeah, makes sense? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because the, the way that these plane bearings work is that the, the axle has a polished journal right. uh, on the end of it, and then there's just a, a brass piece that rides on top of it yeah. with a, a contoured Babbitt face that rides on that. And then below... There's what we call a pad or a, or a sheep, if you will. <laughs> That's just a bunch of cotton waste or a, or a dedicated, like, knit cotton pad that oh, uh, sits in an oil bath. And then as it heats up, the oil wicks and goes around the axle and keeps things moving. But uh, it only starts, like, you only get lubrication after you've rolled once. So sometimes they don't want to roll right away, which is always funny. It's, it's a long... I mean, it's definitely slower going down for some reason. It's weird. We are, we are actually, like, <laughs> not that fast. Right, with well, only now, two now empty we're on hoppers. The two and a quarter, so we're we're gonna roll nice and easy all the way into the yard. Now this is the two and a quarter through here, and we've yet to encounter Pudis. So Pudis might just be, you know, it'll probably hit us hit a switch at the other end of the north end of the yard, and uh, it'll probably derail itself right there. It actually is gonna pick up a load and go make twenty dollars on its own. Without it might us, without it us might. even knowing. I was just thinking, you know, that was funny. Um, the, that engine we restored at the railroad museum, the 491. Uh, the reason that they put it out of oh, service. Pudis doors. The... Pudis doors. Pudis door Pudis alert. Doors. There it is. There's Pudis doors. Okay, continue. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the reason they took 491 out of service was actually because she went on a walk all by herself and dumped herself in the dirt uh, at the other end of the yard. Uh, wow. The throttle leaked so bad that it you know it got machined wrong and then it, the steam was just wearing away at it. Uh, that it was able to lift its snifters and just take off and just start putting through the yard all by itself. No engineer, no fireman with the... But the that would only happen, handle. like, once you've been, like, letting the... Because obviously these engines aren't stored... Like, they're stored without, you know, any sort of boiler pressure, right? Like, they would bleed all the pressure well, when you store I mean, it. You you either have them up or down, so you'd actually have them sitting outside ready to go unless it was time for an inspection or something. So they'd actually be stored under steam because it takes a long time to actually get them hot and everything. So, right. But normally the throttle seals, and in the case of poor 491, it didn't. And she went on a little adventure, ran over the derailed device at the north end of the yard to protect, you know, trains, you know, from runaways out the yard. And uh, exactly what happened to Pudis, as predicted, happened to 491. You'll probably see it in a couple oh, seconds here. Oh, there it is, here. yep. Although 491 didn't tip over. 491 just laid in the dirt and, 
you know, sat there chuffing. So the derail device, that's like where it lifts one wheel off the track, right? And then it just like one side yeah. off the track. It, it pretty much does the same thing as a switch set against you in the game. So yeah, yeah. purposefully dumps you in the dirt so you don't, don't, I don't break know. things or hurt people. Oh yeah, no, we got dumped. Yep, there we go. <laughs> Dude, that would be a sweet gravity the, run, though. You should, you could, you could really uh, smooth out a few of those corners, and that would be a wicked gravity run. Indeed, I've got some streamlining to do for sure, but uh, eventually we'll get there. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for uh, showing me the epic two percent run and and reaffirming why I should never do it on my own save. Uh, yeah, I cannot recommend that unless you're only running the Eureka, in which case I still pity you. Yeah, but, like. Uh, yeah. <laughs> If you're only, your only your entire engine, engine arsenal is just Eurekas, nothing else. You don't you don't believe in any of the other engines. Then definitely run a two percent. That's that's the moral of the story here. And I, I the first time I ran up it, I even had to double. I built that passing track on that. I had to double the hill because Eureka couldn't pull. Right. <laughs> you know, even however many cars it was. Yeah. Let us know what you guys think in the comments down below. Of course, let us know if you have other ideas for railroads online. Uh, I'm gonna apologize for like the 600th time, probably just because I'm Canadian, but uh, yeah, my internet was kind of the death. So, if Heist sounded more robot-y than usual, it's just because my uh, my internet is um, yeah, it's 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 not having a good day. It's it's snowing, and, and it's it's not because the robot overlords from the tech giants. It's not are the 5G. It's not the 5G, it's not 5G towers. No. It's no, it's not. Zuckerberg did not hack my YouTube channel. It's just it's just the blizzard outside i told mother nature to like let off for an hour and she was all like yeah that's not happening so anyway let us know what you guys think like subscribe check out heist's channel link in the description and uh we'll see y'all next time peace bye um this is all from the switch momentum dude this is ridiculous <laughs> it's kind of hilarious <laughs>